done the usual rounds, running around the house, getting everybody else off the internet to, <laughs> to give this its best chance, you know. Well, I suppose we live in a very rural area, slap bang in the middle of the Sparrow Mountains, uh, four miles from Draperstown. We've five people in the house and everybody obviously wants to be on, especially with everyone at home now, where me and my wife are both working from home and the kids are all home, so everybody wants to be online, but we have to ration it, we have to <laughs> take it sort of one at a time. We, we moved here 10 years ago, and if, I, if I'm being honest, had, had I seen into the future better, we, we, we probably, you know, it's, it's not the house you would buy. You know, you, you, the scenery is beautiful, but the, the, the broadband situation is, is probably the biggest um, downside to living where we live. It's a big equality issue, there's no doubt about it. We're, we're getting less than one megabyte per second between sort of 0.6 to 0.8. Anyone who's interacting with government, the expectation is that they go online to do that. If the government expects that, then the government must then put in the infrastructure that enables people to get affordable, accessible, high quality broadband to every household in Northern Ireland. But the pandemic, I think, has exacerbated the inequality in rural areas where broadband speeds are woeful. We then create a have and have not. Kids who are being taught, kids who can link in, and the kids then who sit outside of that. Those who can work from home and stay home and stay safe, and those who can't because their broadband is so rubbish, they'll have to get on public transport or whatever it is in order to access their, their place of work. That division becomes so much greater and so much more apparent um, for rural people.